you know, everything has been behind schedule this year. I mean, it's already, you know, getting into the, towards the end of May and, you know, the trees are just starting to bud. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy how far we're behind this year. Really late spring. It took a long time for things to warm up. We've had a lot of wind, a lot of rain this spring. You know, and probably the big story on Devil's Lake this year where we're at today is just the fact that this water's been coming up. You know, we've had, you know, really dry conditions the last couple of years where the water's actually dropped. Now the lake's come up, you know, well over two feet and there's more on the way. And so this lake's gonna rise this year, which creates a, some different situations. Every year throws you a different curve, but program that's been working the best for me right now is finding these isolated, protected, shallow bays that are just protected enough where no matter what way the wind blows hard, they don't get churned up because they're small and they're protected. And that water out in the main, bigger parts of the lake, the main basins can't get pushed in and, and cool it off. And so warm water, but also looking for that better visibility. Say if you can see down a foot, foot and a half, even two feet, that's perfect. If you can only see down three to four, five, six inches, <laughs> keep looking. And so there's a lot of places where there's a lot of dirty water and there's places where there's a little bit cleaner water. Look for that cleaner water that's warm and that's where we've been finding walleyes here so far this spring. You know, all the fish have spawned, so we're basically dealing with post-spawn fish in shallow water. Oh, there's a fish. Staying down nice, look at that. Oh yeah, here she comes. Come on up here. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, I love this time of year. Oh, come on up here. That's a good fish. Oh, look at that. Slide the net underneath her here. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Love it. Show you what we got going on here. Get this fatty out of the net here. Big old jaws on her. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Just a gorgeous post spawn walleye. Pretty much all these fish have dumped their eggs here now. And these fish are looking for the shallow, warm water. It's beautiful here. We'll get this fish in the water here right away. There she goes. And the program's pretty simple. I mean, we're catching fish shallow. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. I mean, there's situations where you might be better off using slip bobbers. There's times where we'll throw a lot of swim baits or jigs with soft plastics, or sometimes even jigs with bait. But what I find this time of year is a lot of times this is a moving target. You know, this wind's, you know, changing direction every day. That warm water is getting pushed around. Some of the exact spots where these fish set up can change. And so I find that I can go a little faster and cover a little bit more water by pitching crankbaits. Plus it's just a fun way to catch fish. And so, you know, a lot of times we have the boat positioned at six feet of water and we're throwing in, you know. And the types of spots that we're looking for isn't necessarily a real sharp break. It's just kind of a stair step down. If you have a little bit of a lip right next to the shoreline, we can get that three feet of water fairly close to shore. And just kind of a gradual slope or a good cast, you know, maybe, oh, maybe say 30 feet, you know, you're in six, seven feet of water. That's the type of slope you're looking for. These fish will push up and set up on these shallow flats, but uh, fun, effective way to catch big walleyes right now. You know, Devil's Lake is just a, I guess we call a casting paradise. And the thing about it is if you don't know the lake well, I don't know if there's a better way to learn spots quickly and to just break down water and to find fish. And so the biggest thing is you can cover shorelines. I mean, there's some shorelines gonna be good. Yeah, some are not gonna be good, you know, but you can cover a lot of water and you can just look for the right profiles. You can learn the spots really well. And the thing about it is sometimes you'll go through and cast cranks, maybe catch a few fish, go back through and slip bobber, or go back through and pitch jigs and plastics and catch a few more. But cranks are a great way to break down water and to cover water and to learn these spots. And you know, when the wind's blowing, you just follow the wind, fish the wind, cast with the wind, and you can just go. Staying down nice. Oh yeah. 
get the net here. Oh yeah. Get the net in here. Chunk. These fish are just starting to eat. Water's just starting to warm up a little bit. And they're just starting to go on cranks. This is a chunk of a walleye. This is a great proportion. That'd be just a great eating fish right there. Beautiful. And in she goes. That fish is lucky day. So to show you the bait that we're using, it was just shallow water. You know, a lot of times the boat might be in six feet of water. These fish might be in, say, two, three, four feet of water. And it's just these tapering flats. And so instead of running a crankbait that's got a, a deep diving bill that just gets down quicker, you know, you just get fouled up. You know, there's some emerging weeds that are starting to come up here. And so you basically just want a shallow running bait. And so this is the Rumble Shiner. You see here's just got a little bit wider profile, that Shiner, almost shad profile, flat body, wide out on the top. Then it's got that big round bill. And what that big round bill does is it gives a good wobble at slow speeds, but also when you're bringing this lure through the water, it's almost does it like an ass where it just it's kind of subtly changing directions where it doesn't just track straight. It just kind of almost changes angles. And it seems like early in the year when that water's cold, that's just a deadly trigger for walleyes. You know, the whole deal with these crankbaits is you can definitely reel too fast. Or just kind of a slow, methodical retrieve where we're just pulling that lure with the rod tip. Pulling and stopping. Every once in a while, maybe give it a couple little quick, fast pops just to get that lure to flash. It's not just a steady, straight reel. It's just a slow, kind of a slow, erratic reel. There's a fish. Oh, that was cool. That fish was way up there. Come on up here. Fish does not want to come up. That is a nice walleye. Look at that big old mouth on her. Wind's kind of blowing us in short here. I'm going to hit spot lock here real quick. Oh, look at that fish just swallowed it. Oh my. Come here. Oh, come here. Oh, <laughs> great fish. Look at that. You can't even see that rumble shiner. Wow. Dig it out of here. Oh, that's the bait doing all the damage. There. Look at that. That is why we're here. Devil's Lake. Look at the big old hump back on there. Golly, I love walleyes when they're built like that. Nice dark fish. These fish just hit it with an attitude. Probably one of my favorite ways to catch a walleye, pitching cranks up in shallow water. You know, the biggest thing with the wind is work with the wind. You know, we're gonna get plenty of wind on Devil's Lake, you know, and so, you know, even with your boat control, if you can drift with the wind, cast with the wind, it just makes it a lot easier. And so even if you get, you know, two to four foot rollers out there, don't be afraid to get in that water where it's rough and fish the wind. Make long casts, and a lot of times those fish are pushed right up where that wind's blowing in on shore. Nice walleye. In the front of the boat here. That fish hit about halfway back. Come on up here. That's a chunk on the fish. Oh yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. Fish out of the net here. There we go. Just a chunk of a walleye. Just gorgeous. And, you know, this pattern, this shallow pattern will last into the summer for quite a ways especially with high water. When you have high water, just like it, it just pushes these fish against these shorelines. So I started out throwing a, I believe it was a size eight rumble shiner. And now the last couple of fish, I've actually downsized to just a smaller, smaller bait. What I'm finding is these fish are moving up even shallower. They're moving a little bit tighter to the bank. 
So I wanted something that's going to run a little bit shallower. So I've been experimenting between the two sizes. There's a fun bait to catch fish with. You know, so a lot of different baits that we're casting in the spring, you know, some of them are pretty easy to cast. You look at mimic minnows, you look at jigs and soft plastics, you look at even like a countdown, you know, that's heavy tackle that you can cast pretty easy, but you look at some of this balsa tackle, you know, whether it's a number five shad wrap or like a number seven rumble shiner, you know, not very heavy bait. And so one thing that really helps get these baits out further when you're casting small crankbaits in the spring, especially if you have to go crosswind or against the wind, is just really thin braid. And so, you know, I've been using a lot of fire line for years. The last couple of years, I really fell in love with the nano fill just because it's really thin diameter, very sensitive. You can feel the vibration of the lure. You can feel those fish come up and push on it. You can feel if there's any weeds on the lure. And so I like to use braided line. And the thinner diameter, the better, you know, as far as just casting these light lures. But one thing I do, I think this is pretty important, because there's a lot of pike out here. You're going to lose a lot of tackle if you're not prepared. And so there's a lot of different things you can do. I mean, you can use a steel leader if you wanted to. And, and you know what? You'll catch walleyes using a steel leader out here, especially if the water's staying. But one thing I started doing is just using a heavy fluorocarbon, even like a 14, 20 pound fluorocarbon. And just, you can see there, it's probably about two feet or so. I just use an Alberto knot to connect the braid to the fluorocarbon, and then just tie it to a snap. And uh, we'll show you how to tie an Alberto knot here. Pretty easy knot to tie, but. Uh, Definitely that braid, heavy fluorocarbon combination is going to save you a lot of tackle here. Once this water temperature hits 60 degrees, these pike in here go ballistic. We didn't show all the pike today because we only have a half hour show, but trust me, I mean, sometimes you catch one wall, you got to catch five or ten pike. You're going to catch a lot of fish doing that. And that's what makes it so fun is, yeah, you're catching walleyes, you're catching pike, you're catching white bass, you're catching everything. By the end of the day, your lure's all chewed up, your hands are cut up, and uh, you better make sure you have that heavy fluorocarbon leader because you can feel that that's frayed up. And so it's combat fishing out here. You know, these fish aren't just stacked in one spot. They're just kind of scattered in these areas. And so you catch one here and you catch one there. We've caught a couple now right up in this area here, but that's the beauty of pitching cranks like this. You can cover some water and these fish are just kind of spread out in areas. You can, you can hunt them down. And not to mention, it's a lot of fun. You know, see this wind starting to push up in here. And a lot of times you're fishing the wind. I mean, a lot of times the wind is where it's at. So you combine wind with a little bit of sunshine this time of year, water warms up and that water gets, that warm water gets mixed a little bit deeper. That gets these fish, just supercharges them. So a lot of times you get a little bit later on in the day and a lot of times that's what some of your best fishing is. Sometimes your mornings can be kind of quiet and that wind makes up its mind and blows that warmer water up along a particular shoreline and then the that bite sets up. There's a fish way up on the bank. Get the boat turned here. Staying down nice. Oh yeah, nice walleye. And it ain't hooked very good. Right in the corner of the mouth. There we go. A scrapper. I love it when they're right up on the bank like that. I mean, that bait was almost in the cattails. And I think I cranked it one time and pop. Love bites like that. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of times people are looking for a magic water temperature. There's no magic water temperature. You're just looking for the warmer water, the warmest water. And so it's relative. If you can find a shoreline where there's say 58, 59 degree water getting stacked along it and everything else is colder, that's where you want to be. You want to look out, look for that warmer water. But that being said, a lot of times, you know, this water will cool down each night. You know, it's still getting cold at night. Right away in the morning, you know, that water temperature might be say five, six, seven degrees colder than what it was the day before when you're out fishing. And so a lot of times it just takes a little while to percolate. You'll catch a few fish in the morning, 
least lets you know that you're on the right track, you're doing the right thing in the right areas. And then as that day progresses and it just gets a little warmer, a little warmer, then the bite seems to pick up. And that's so typical when we're walleye fishing early in the year. Oh yeah, golly. Nothing better than looking down in that green water and just seeing an angry walleye thrashing around. Fun fishing. Up here. Look at that, just nipped it right on the end of the bait. And this pattern's starting to kind of set up. I mean, you know, start out making some pretty long drifts. You know, might work maybe a quarter mile of shoreline, you know, that's productive. And then that wind starts to blow into a specific area and your passes just keep getting shorter and shorter. Now we're working a, basically a, about a 100, 150 yard stretch, just going up and down and they keep adding up. That's just beautiful. So this leader here is getting pretty short, so I'm going to tie a new one here, and I'll just show you how to tie this Alberto knot. Which, if you ever forget, you can just look it up on YouTube. There's a lot of videos out there show you how to tie knots. So basically, you take your braided line, take your fluorocarbon leader material, and this is important here. So you always take your leader material, and you t put it in a bin. You don't want to do this backwards. What I find is that that leader material, just the knot ties a lot better. So you take your leader material, put it in a bend like this, run your braided line through the loop. Okay, so you got your braided line here, you got your loop here in the fluorocarbon. And basically you just take this tag end of this braid and you just wrap it around your loop. You can go down about, oh, maybe five times, six times. Just keep wrapping. Okay, so you got about five, six wraps going down, and then you take the tag end of the braid and you go five, six wraps back up towards the loop. Okay, now you got your tag end of your braid and you just run it through the loop. Get a little wet. You cinch it up. That's just a really good knot, especially for braided line, because braided line can be a little tricky, you know, it'll, it'll slip on you. And so, find that braided line and fluorocarbon or even heavy monofilament leader, whenever you want to tie a leader on with braid, that Alberto knot's a pretty solid knot for walleye fishing. Fish are definitely showing a preference for this little zone right now where the wind's blowing in. Water temperatures creeping up to 58.2. There's a fish. Oh yeah, another walleye. Not a bad fish at all. We'll get the net underneath her here. Oh man, look at that. That fish is barely hooked. There we go. <laughs> and off in the net. <laughs> but they all count the same, right? <laughs> oh, I love this. All right, let's show this fish off. Just a great, just a great representation of a walleye. Look at that. Just gorgeous. Gorgeous. I just love, love how thick and solid they are. Just strong up in the shallow water. And I tell you what, some of the first bites were just kind of, you stop it and just, they'd almost like, the bites were mushy, were just kind of almost like they were munching on it. These last, Maybe three fish, four fish, it's just snap, it's just electric. It just, <laughs> you stop that bait and it's just really hard hits. And I just love that when these fish start hitting these baits aggressively. And that's the thing is, you know, these fish, that water warms up and you'll find, you know, these fish will get a little bit more aggressive. You don't have to get quite so slow, quite so methodical. You can snap that rod tip a little more, reel a little faster to get these fish going. But uh, just such a, such a productive program here on Devil's Lake and a lot of these I guess what you call these dish bowl prairie lakes. Tell you what, this casting crankcase is where it's at for big parts of the year. Early in the year when the water's still cold, but it's just starting to warm up, this shallow 
pitching crank thing happens every single year. But here's the deal, when we get high water, when that water comes up two, three, four feet, it seems like it keeps those fish shallow for that much longer. So I anticipate that this shallow crankbait bite is gonna happen through most of the summer. If you love to fish shallow water, if you love to pitch cranks, this is gonna be a good year to do it. There he is. Oh, that fish nailed it. Catch up with it here. First thing these fit walleyes wanna do is race towards that deeper water. Acting like a walleye. Oh yeah, nice walleye. That fish just stopped it. There's <laughs> no doubt in your mind at a bite. Oh, come on up here. They are so strong this time of year. That's what makes this so much fun. Oh, come here. There we go. All right. Beautiful. These are just the prettiest walleyes. Yep. They're done spawning, and all they want to do is eat. Look at there on this fin here. It's kind of got a, kind of got something happened to her. This fin, yeah, just a great full spawn walleye. Kind of see the tail there too. It's kind of funny. Beautiful fish. Fun, fun, fun. There she goes. This is angry as ever. But I tell you what, this is something. Come out here and do. I mean, it's just, it's, I think it's one of the reasons that people love to come and fish Devil's Lake so much. There's a lot of places you can go to catch walleyes. Wherever you go to catch walleyes, you got to drive by walleyes to get there, you know, if you live in the upper Midwest. But there's just something about, you know, boats in six, seven, eight feet of water, casting in, getting cracked by a walleye in a couple feet of water, hitting a crankbait, these fish just fight hard. I mean, it's just a lot of different ways to catch a walleye, a lot of places to do it, but there's nothing quite like pitching cranks up in shallow water, and that's why people love Devil's Lake.